Last time I was here. Do we have SL? No, we don't. Bummer. Do we have cow say? Okay. Whatever. We'll have to leave this without some kind of humorous introduction. Um, so, where I left off... Um, okay. I don't recall this. That's kind of unfortunate. Um, actually, this is something I didn't write. Okay. Uh, let's back up. I don't remember writing much in the way of Python. Um, define. Whatever. So, yeah, where I left off, I was leveraging um, Weka classifiers. Although, I thought I better documented what I was doing than this. Oh, wait. No, I moved my code into Python. Right, so I was able to start a JVM, load up a classifier, and utilize it. So if I do test, yeah. This is just a really basic classification scheme. Um, and MOA is a framework which allows you to um, well, it allows you to process data using their framework. Um, so I guess the next thing I gotta figure out... Yeah, I've gotta read up on the documentation about how to use one of these streams, and I have to fill in the details myself. Uh, I wish I hadn't waited so long to do some of this. Um, all right. And the other thing is I had filed a bug because one of their examples was not working. Um, I should check on the status of that bug I filed, or that issue. Uh, so let me take a quick look at that. I don't think I got a response. I've been monitoring for some kind of response and just I didn't get anything. But maybe it's resolved somehow. Um, nope. That's still out there. The uh, bug is 12 days old. Um, all right. Yeah, so I think I know what happened here. Like, right before I started the stream, I removed some empty directories. I think that originally those directories weren't empty. Um, 
So I think some of the things I was testing with last time are no longer here. Uh, Okie dokie. Um, what else did I work on last time? Oh, right, I have this convert.py script, which takes games in JSON format and creates a games.arff file, which. Uh, These are the three games. Um, I don't even remember where some of this data came from. Uh, but yeah, so I concatenate uh, converted versions of the files into games.arff, which lists all the game attributes that are worthy of being listed and subsequent to such conversion um, I run a classification on all that um, Are those three okay so those other three commands that's basically all I'm running is just convert and then test um, so I guess the next logical step is to find a way to use some kind of streaming loader um, Yeah, I need to create a version or modify this test um, such that it uses the streaming API. So let me figure that one out. Um, I do see that. Oh. So we get those loaders. Yeah, let me find. Uh, I don't want to use the GUI front end. Maybe using Python's not the right way. Why did I want to use Python? Um, I don't know, Python's a good scripting language. Uh, there's good libraries for interoperability with Python and other languages. But why Python? Why did I start here? Um, I guess because this this Python API is supposed to make it more convenient to utilize uh, the Weka API. I keep clicking on the same links. I'm not sure why I expect to see different things when I click on the same documentation. Um,
<laughs> What's this rapid miner thing? Oh. Yeah, this I don't trust this documentation I'm reading. Okay. Hmm. Python Weka wrapper. Um. Does it allow me to utilize the stream API? Oh, there's a newer version of this library. I should use the new version. Change log suggests three changes. Loader.load file now checks whether the dataset exists instead of. Uh, so, of causing an error. Replaced one package with a different package as package management code is now part of Weka as opposed to being using a third-party library. JVM.start no longer tries to load packages if home Weka files packages should not yet exist. Okay. Uh, so I should download the new version. Let me get the URL and download it. Also, where is Python Weka Wrapper installed on this machine? Um, I just don't remember where I installed it. How did I do such installation? Oh, I used pip to install. pip upgrade python weka wrapper uh, update, I don't know, install use dash dash upgrade to upgrade Okie dokie, so we got the new Python Weka wrapper. Permission denied. Pseudo pip install. Okay, so we got the new library, 0.3.6. I'm going to just run a regression test. So. My old test script still works. That's a good thing. Um, so now I've got to figure out okay, how do I use the streams API through the wrapper if indeed such a task is feasible. I would have tried to figure that out first, but Trying to upgrade and see if the upgrade succeeds first seemed a lot easier than doing research. And now it's time to research whether I can 
use the streams API through this wrapper. I'm starting to think that this API does not expose uh, MOA's stream API. Yeah, now this one's just for Weka. Um, this is not going to work. I need to use uh, MOA. Let's see, what's this thing about flow? Oh. This is inspired by the Atoms workflow engine. It's a very simple workflow aimed at task automation, and it's easy to extend. Instead of linking operators with connections, this uses a tree structure for defining how data are processed. Okie dokie. The life cycle of the flow involves setup, execution, wrap up, and cleanup. Um, so I think, yeah, this is intended for very, very simple flow. Um, Hmm. <laughs> All right. So it appears that using this Python Weka wrapper isn't going to help. And I need to see, is there a way I can just use MOA directly from the command line? And if MOA is not accessible from the command line, then I need to... I don't know what. Maybe I do need to use atoms after all. to this, but I suppose, um, whew, I don't know if this workflow engine would be using a sledgehammer to hit a fly, but uh, atoms might be the way to go. Uh, let's see, do we have any any web browser capability on here? Uh, no. So, we're going to say we get HTTP atoms CMS Y Keto uh, Oops, I typoed. It's not add to buzz, it's atoms. Uh, 
Okay, how did I mistype this this time? Waikato. Okay, uh, so I've been mispronouncing this the entire time. Alright. Um. Maybe I do need a web browser. Uh, maybe that would help me. Um, let me just proceed to the release version. Okay, so this isn't what I want. I want this download release 0412. I'm going to zip in this thing. Um, oh, that loads an external URL. Uh, is there any way I can keep in sync? I don't know. Alright, so I've got a get the URL in my external browser here. Um, so we'll s first log out. All right, so Adams, uh, why? Okay, let me get the URL so I can paste it. Copy paste. Do you get? There we go. So envy this thing to that without the special extension. Unzip this thing. keeps trying to log out of that session, but um, okay. And there's got to be some getting started documentation for atoms. Um, Oh, 
would prefer if there were a non GUI version of this Adams thing. Uh, there is a headless mode. Very good. Can I just download an example or run an example? Um, uh, they're all PDFs. It's cool and all, except I don't have a command line PDF viewer. Um, So apparently the command I can do is just bin run. And I could specify headless. Um, I have to specify the main class. Does that run? <laughs> Finished execution. All right, so I guess that means that all flows were run. Um, So what am I doing with some of this? Um, first, I'm going to copy uh, let's add on a little to this test. Paste. Um, and I've forgotten the name of the Adams folder. Copy. Paste. Stay on this page. I typoed there. There we go. And if I run this, following that classification that invokes Adams uh, and Adams detects that there's no flows to be concerned about um, oh wait yeah let me try the command they suggest here which is we're going to run the flow runner engine memory of 256m clean up between tests run this headlessly with file of well it's not going to matter because first of all I need to specify where Adams is at. There we go. And the file of Adams flows Adams uh, Weka cross validator. Uh, 
Rebecca cross validate uh, classifier dot flow. With any luck, that will perform all our classification stuff. All right, so I'm just, hey, welcome. Sorry, I don't know how long I dozed off there. Um, so this is, I don't know, take three, take four, some take of trying to write a uh, neural network. Um, so uh, do I generate any files here? No, I don't know. Let's take a look at this flow definition. Flow. So, cross validates a classifier and outputs the evaluation summary. Um, all right, so I think I need to define the example flows directory. Since as I run, um, well, let's try running that again. So we have our old test and our new test. Um, and this new test here hopefully should um, print some kind of descriptions. I don't know where the control W is coming from. I'm certainly not typing that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I don't think I need these. Well, let me count these things out. I guess for consistency's sake, let's take our latest and greatest example and stick it at the front. Uh, so I'm not sure where logging is logged. Um, um, so ideally I would be taking chess games and evaluations and just any old kind of chess related data and drawing whatever conclusions can be drawn from it. Just trying to uh, expand upon the idea of just classifying data and testing it in general. I don't, I know, um, I guess what's of most interest to me is can we teach people how to play chess better. I don't really care so much about this other issue people deeply care about, which happens to be is a person using a computer to help them while they play. I know some people are extremely passionate about that sort of thing. That's not what makes me so concerned, although if people, I don't know, I don't want this dialogue appearing over and over. Um, but people, mm, I don't know. If this is what's going to motivate machine learning, 
or at least start to push us in the right direction and have us invest some resources into that sort of thing I guess that's a good thing but it's probably not the way I would have gone I don't know people want to learn to play chess better and right now the only things they have are puzzles and books and various pieces of software that try to teach you to play better but don't do a very good job at it um, it's all very static in the sense that it's not very dynamic it's very um, scripted once and does not make an effort to learn from your inability to learn some things and really it needs to try to permute through various games and combinations and ideas until it uh, finally latches on to what is it that um, uh, that you're struggling with and how can we help you figure out what it is that you're struggling with I mean yeah there's only so far a computer can go to teach a person um, but I don't know I think we could do a lot better than we're doing The idea of modeling human behavior and decision making in chess is pretty interesting. Uh, Maybe I do need to try this Adams thing interactively. Um, Cause the way I'm running this test, it appears not to be, I just wanted a simple command line test that shows that I deployed this right. And I don't think I've got that. Um, Yeah, something like a coach, I think, would be interesting. Um, now, I get it that a coach actually understands how to play, and the coach has experience that they draw upon, and they're able to instruct a person. Um, I think that's more than we can ask of a machine, but I think a machine could at least point out where is it that you're messing up. Oh, um, regarding the tree viewer for engine lines, let me see if I, I've got something I found here recently, which is interesting. Um, and it appears that developers kind of open-minded too. Um, I think a tree viewer is under development. If that's what you're really interested in, you could help this other dude who's working on a tree viewer. And he's kind of asking for feedback. Um, Let's see. Yeah, this thing called Chess Brancher. Um, I'll leave this to you to explore if you so desire, but I thought it was a cool visualization tool. I don't have time to work on it at the moment, but if you really want, um, there's this cool project out there. Somebody's making a web page enabled uh, branch viewer or not so much an engine branch viewer but just something that you can use to perform your own analyses um, you know it would be interesting chess tempo has a big database of tactics problems but also stores how each problem was failed I actually like where that started um, and the average rating of the users that failed in that way it'd be cool to use a learning system to learn how to fail problems in the same way, given a rating parameter. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. That's 
Um, I actually uh, downloaded some computer chess puzzles as I was trying to tune AI strengths. One of my attempts was um, to take this puzzle database and see if I could get the AI to fail X percent of the puzzles. And I would just keep tweaking parameters until I would get kind of sort of close to uh, that goal. Um, but that that's a AI way of looking at problems. Uh, um, I, I think somehow it's easier to get a program that just does analysis. Computers are good at crunching numbers and crunching data. They're not so good at generating numbers and generating data, although they can do that too. Um, but yeah, I think the more interesting question is, um, I think I'm asking kind of the same question you are in, in a different way. Like, if a player fails a problem, or if they don't fail a problem, what can we know about that player? Um, but yeah, getting an AI to model a human behavior is more challenging than get it to, getting it to try to um, analyze uh, human behavior. Yeah. Although, yeah, I think some such a thing could be doable. It'd be interesting for sure. Um, I think maybe when I'm done with this classification tool or regression tool or whatever, somebody could go one step further and use this to classify every potential move or variation in a given position and say that um, this is a human-like move or this is a not a human-like move. Um, or this is a beginner move, this is an expert move. Um, I think that would be... Oh, and using such classifications would have that some program vote on which move it's going to play. And maybe have a whole cluster of these programs put together, all voting on what's the so-called best move that a human would find. That would be one step beyond what I'm intending to do, although it's certainly doable. People do like seeing computers do things, and um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, money put into getting robots to move around fields and walk like humans, just because that's something that fascinates people. Um, and I guess, I don't know if there'd be money in getting programs to move like chess players, but maybe there would be. Um, does it already have a net neural network for analysis? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Um, it's kind of where I'm trying to go with this, because um, I don't think they have such a thing. If they did... Oh, you're probably reacting to the fact that this is named uh, analysis. Now, this is very not even alpha at this point. Um, not even released. Uh, I am on the cutting edge trying to make such a thing, I think. Um, and I'm trying to use... I should update my stream URL because I'm using a different tool here. Um, so... Where's my dashboard? So I can go update that. change where it says MOA and um, yeah, it's probably an appropriate stream title. That'll do. Uh, the danger is that a system that's very good at differentiating between human and engine moves exactly. It's an arms race and that's kind of like 
why I'm more interested in just the analysis side and less interested in synthesis. Um, although, I mean, nobody's perfect, and <laughs> actually, that uh, that brings up a really interesting point, right? Uh, let me see if I can find what it is I'm trying to say here. Uh, let me see. Yeah, here we go. Can I get this one on the stream? I think so. There we go. Just ponder that for a minute. I'm going to go pour myself a beverage. expect kind of a mixed reaction to this comic because um, okay I mean there's two sides to the argument right so if somebody made some AI that plays human like and it plays very well why should anybody care if it has a high rating um, on the other hand it's not human people care about ratings because, I don't know, they like to see big numbers next to their names. Um, so that's the other side of the argument is that, it, well, it wouldn't really be a human, therefore it shouldn't be in some top ten list or something. Um, I think it's fair to keep uh, programs off of top ten lists and such for human players. Uh, but it'd be nice if they listed themselves as being uh, programs and uh, in my opinion they should be allowed to play rated games but they could be kept off of the human top 10 lists. And by top 10 I just mean um, well yeah you've seen uh, the rating lists on Lee Chess. Um, People that are near the top of human players want to stay near the top. <laughs> yeah. I think it's okay, though, if a uh, program plays on the server and has a higher rating than human. It just wouldn't have a... You would want to keep that um, somehow labeled as being a computer. Wanting to be the highest rated player is a really vain thing, I think. It's great that you want to perform well, but doing so at the expense of others not being the top, uh, it's kind of a bit overkill. Um, so, Just looking at this test file, um, So I need to define this example flows directory. Uh, and look for anneal.arff. OK, so there it is. Um, export. Um, this is equal to Adam's flows. Okay. And now 
can I rerun the test and hopefully it'll work? Alright, so what have I missed out on? You guys are saying... Yeah, I mean... It, it's a very hard problem. If you acknowledge that it's a problem, and I think you do. Um, well, it's not a machine problem, it's a social problem. And technology can help people communicate better. Oh, come on, really? You gotta log me out like that. Uh, so, I don't know what's up with that. Um, but apparently, maybe the machine just, I don't know what it did. Um, oh, let's see. Uptime? It's been up 42 days. I don't know why my connection got dropped all of a sudden. Um, let's see, if I do this again, is it going to drop me a second time? Because that would not be cool. So one of my previous commands was this export command, which is no longer there. Um, somehow not only did it log me out, but it did so without saving my previous commands. Um, so let's figure out where... Uh, yeah, let's view this. Keep typoing. Okay, so the thing I need to define is example underscore flows. Example underscore flows is equal to uh, this directory. But I don't want to just do that this time. I want to embed this into my test script. View test test dot sh and I keep typoing here because I'm used to working on a different machine where the key shortcut to save things is a, or po paste things is a little different. Uh, so hopefully this is not going to disconnect me again. Also, did my stream go down? I should keep remembering to check that sort of thing. Nope, I'm, I've been up the entire time. That's good. Um, Alright. So... Let's um, take a look at our data. Really? Yeah, so that's a perfectly valid file. Um, do I get a log file out of this? No. Oh, shoot. Well, it appears there's no quick and easy setup for this particular tool. I apparently have to download the graphical version and experiment with it to get a feel for what it is that I'm missing. Um, so here's my command. 
It says run the flow, <coughs> run the flow runner. Use two fifty six megs of rem memory. Uh, do so without the GUI. Uh, clean up between tests. And um, use this particular flow file. Let me just dive into this directory and try this again. So we're going to step into here. Um, and since we move into this directory, Flow directory is simply just that flow. Uh, we're doing just bin run. So I'm trying to do exactly the command um, that's given in the example. It's just bin run, uh, run that flow. This is literally what I copied out of um, this web page. And if I run that, I uh, should see some, I don't know, I should have some success running it from here because that's literally character for character what the documentation tells me to do when running it. Um, so possibly no this is headless mode this shouldn't need shouldn't need me to have a monitor attached to that machine um, uh, it's so puzzling is there any like verbose option Copy, paste. Or do I actually need to go manipulate the logging settings myself? I think I do. Um, so I need to take a look at flows, atoms, weka, cross-validate, classifier.flow. Logging settings are not enumerated here. Okay. Um, I'm missing something obvious. But what? I don't know. What am I overlooking? Cross validates a classifier and outputs the evaluation summary. I mean, that seems like a reasonable thing to want to do. Um, am I missing Weka or something? I mean, how do I make logging verbose? Okay, so bin run is in fact a shell script or script of some sort. Uh, is there a debug option? Is there a verbose option? There is not. Okay. So, how do I 
I get this to uh, be verbose? I might have to watch some videos to figure this out. Um, dollar Java opts. Well, that's a thing. Uh, let's echo Java opts. All right. Um, I wonder if there's a way I could use Java opts to force verbose logging. Java opts. Uh, which logger is this? This is. <laughs> it's Org Eclipse Jetty Logger. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Jetty logging. I've never used Jetty before. At least not that I'm aware of. Okay, so you can... Um, Apparently there's a jetty logging dot properties file. <laughs> okay, so you have to use jetty nine or newer because older jetty versions are at end of life. Um, so I should look for a file called jetty dash logging dot properties. Uh, yeah, I didn't expect to find such a thing. Um, such a thing might be concealed inside a jar file, which is not going to help. Um, all right, how's my class path established here? Oh. If property org eclipse jetty util log dot class is defined, use that as the logger. Oh, that's just for implementation. Oh, system dot get properties. Okay. So any properties I define um, should be used. Okay, dokie. How do I specify logging level? Um, how do I specify how granular logging should be? Right now it does seem to go to the debug level, at least for logging some things. Um,
Okay, finally, I found a question. How to enable debug, debug uh, level logging with Jetty embedded? Um, Dash D class ref dot level equals level. Okay. Um, but that defines it on a per class basis. I want to define a logging level that's used for everything. I want everything to be at the debug level so I can figure this out. Um, Yeah, so dash dash module equals logging. Okay, well, I'm going to take a guess here. Um, because where's Ja? Uh, well, I could add arguments here. Um, dollar Java opts. I could export something to that. View uh, test status h export Java opts equals something. Um, I forget how I'm supposed to use the export command. I don't think I get any syntax coloring out of this console, so... Um, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe these are all string literals anyway. Or that atoms... Whoops. Uh, equals debug. Maybe that'll do it. Well, at least this time I don't get any logging. Well, that was... Well, I got some. Um, Oh, export is a command, right? Um, I could have sworn that export is a command. Hmm. 
Maybe not. View dot profile. Execute by the command interpreter for login shells. It's not read by bash. Oh, come on. I don't know why that keeps trying to close my browser. Export um, example. In fact, yeah, just say example flow is equal to dollar sign this uh, flows. And Java ops is equal to org Adams debug. Copy. All right, now how does this work? This is not read by bash, or bash profile, or bash login exists. Um, do I have any... Uh, anything that says export? Bash RC does export. Um, Should take a look at this. So I'll take these two lines and say, where are we exporting things here? Ah, dash aliases. Execute by bash for non-login shells. Oh, but I'm doing this all under a login shell at the moment, so it shouldn't matter. Um, and now if I say, what's the value of Java Ops? Okay, that's good. Making some progress. Hopefully it'll find the example now, or at least give me something. I don't think I got anything. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got nothing. Okay. Um, okie dokie. See if I take. Damn it! I... It's kind of annoying. That's I don't know. The second time today, uh, it logged me out. Not of my own volition. 
Something about the keyboard shortcuts for this particular console are a bit unpredictable. Um, all right. Actually, if I go back to Weka files, oh hey look, there's a log file. Uh, I'll take it. Trying to add database driver, not in class path. Registering Mecha editors, finished execution. All right, so. I mean, I'm not sure what kind of database driver I'd want to use anyway. I don't think it would need such a thing, because uh, I don't have a database installed for it to use at the moment. Um, so. Yeah, I think I just need to download this Adam to Adam's tool and try to use it locally. Um, and I'm not sure how much success I'm going to have with that and trying to bring that back into a command line environment when I'm done. Uh, ha, ha, ha. So... Uh, I'm not sure. This Adams library is under active development. It's been so for the last month or so. Um, or it's the last update was a month ago. Well, um, maybe I try a different example here. It's not the only example that they provided, I hope. I hope there's other examples. like a hello world? No, they don't. Um,
cross validate classifier or dot flow. How about create new instance dot flow? This flow demonstrates how to create empty instance objects from an existing data set. Um, okay. And this whack a build classifier dot flow. Builds a classifier in batch mode and outputs model generated model container with the training set header and the actual model. Okay, uh, what else? Adam's Weka. What would be a simple one of these? Remove outliers.flow. Allows the user to interactively remove outliers. Um, I just want something that's non interactive, simple to work with and test. And. Um, hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to abandon the server here. And. No, I'm just going to try to do everything for my local PC. Uh, knowing that I probably won't be able to migrate it back to the server.